Hello folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. This video and onwards, I'm going to show you the power of, you know, different algorithms uh, which are used in machine learning these days. You're not only uh, going to learn the mathematics and theory uh, around these algorithms, but also going to build models around uh, these algorithms, you know, in different categories like uh, classification, types of problems, regression, clustering and dimensionality reduction, as well as uh, association rules, uh, convolution neural network, reinforcement learning, etc. You will also get to learn the technique of uh, you know evaluating these algorithms as well so this is an extension of uh, one of my uh, uh, you know video series called data science bootcamp okay so we are going to build these machine learning models using python's uh, scikit-learn package which contains various libraries uh, to work with these algorithms as well as going to you i'm going to use um, a spark ml lib so you will also see the power of distribution, uh, distributed computing uh, using Apache Spark, uh, which is also a very you know important arsenal of uh, data scientists. Okay, so this tutorial series is different from several other tutorial series in a way that you don't have to uh, you know go different places and search for uh, model implementations using both Scikit-Learn as well as spark ml lib okay so you will get uh, everything at one place here so stay connected till the end of this video and this series uh, to acquire the complete knowledge if you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century So folks, as far as prerequisites are concerned, you need to have, uh, you know, some basic Python knowledge as well as uh, knowledge of Spark uh, basic concepts. If you don't know anything about Spark, then just comment in the comment box and I will create a separate video series to explain the Spark concepts in detail, you know, or from the scratch. So in the upcoming uh, videos, I'm going to show you how to install a PySpark to run in Jupyter Notebooks on Windows machines. Uh, the way I have designed this uh, series is that I will cover uh, and explain uh, the intuition behind these different algorithms and different categories uh, like classification, regression, uh, clustering and dimensionality reduction. And then I will build the machine learning models using Python's scikit-learn package followed by Spark MLlib uh, implementation of the same algorithm. So we will, uh, you know, code uh, for both scikit-learn as well as Spark or more specifically PySpark. So what exactly is Spark? Well, Apache Spark is an open source distributed uh, general purpose cluster computing framework which supports Python with Spark. Uh, if you are uh, aware of uh, Hadoop and related ecosystem technologies, uh, Spark is actually an advanced version of Hadoop. Okay. So uh, PySpark, which is a combination of uh, Python and Spark, is a Spark API which provides an interface for uh, programming in distributed computing environment. PySpark is famous for its ease of use as well as speed. Uh, we can also you know, do some streaming analytics using uh, Spark as well. Okay? So there are several, several other uh, Spark APIs like Scala, uh, Java, etc available as well so uh, you are free to code uh, in whichever api you want to code okay algorithms in spark mllib are basically divided into uh, divided into supervised and unsupervised learning now let's quickly move on to the intuition behind simple uh, linear regression so what is simple linear regression well it's a supervised um, learning algorithm in which uh, the relationship uh, between dependent and independent variable can be expressed in a straight line. Dependent variable is the variable that needs to be estimated and predicted and uh, independent variables are uh, variables which, uh, which are you know, given as input um, on the basis of which predictions are given. Okay. 
so these are the variables which are controllable okay supervised learning is one where the data is labeled and is commonly used in applications where historical data predicts likely future events okay on the other hand unsupervised learning is used against the uh, you know data that has no historical labels here label means a target or dependent variables so simple, simple linear regression uh, is represented by uh, this formula called y equals to a0 plus a1 into x which is nothing but the formula of slope line which we might have uh, you know you might have already read in your high schools right so this formula is represented as a line with slope a1 and which has intercept a0 or a0 here y is a dependent variable uh, which is something you try to explain okay for example what grades does a student uh, get uh, with the amount of time he is putting into studies x is independent variable here so in this uh, context y is tagged as grades uh, you want to know and amount of time uh, putting in study is x a1 is coefficient here for x uh, uh, which is x is independent variable as you know which tells how the unit change in x affects y so essentially we can't say that change in x is always equals to change in y there has to be some coefficient or proportion due to which this change might be inflated or deflated a0 or A0 is a constant term here which is a point where a best fit line crosses the vertical uh, y-axis. I will show it in a short while. Okay, So let's visualize the simple linear regression. So we have x-axis and y-axis and on x-axis we have amount of time to study and on y-axis we have uh, student grades. Okay, And here we want to know how the uh, number of study hours uh, affect the grade. So in a regression, uh, basically we just don't look at the theory. We uh, try to find out the evidence. Okay, so here uh, we have some of the observations where grades are distributed according to the amount of time they uh, the students have studied. Okay, so each data point represents a single student who studied for a specific amount of time and got the corresponding grade shown on the y-axis. So the regression equation representing this relation can be depicted as grades equals to a0 plus a1 into time to study. Okay, What this means is that we try to draw a line to this equation that will depict this data in such a way that it should try to uh, you know best fit this data. Okay. It's always hard to, you know, uh, best fit a line which will touch all the data points. So you can, you know, get a best fit line which can approximate the data. Now A0 is constant here, which is uh, a point where this be uh, best fit line crosses the vertical axis or y axis. Okay. In other words, it is a constant value that determines the value of y when x equals to zero. Okay. Suppose the value of a0 here is 1.2 so the formula here will become grades equals to 1.2 plus a1 into time to study what this essentially mean is if a student puts zero uh, number of hours uh, or zero uh, number of hours time to study or doesn't study at all then he will definitely get uh, the grade of 1.2 okay so a1 is a slope here meaning the steeper the line the more grades a student will get per extra time to study okay so let's let me take an example here so let's say a student increased his time to study by one hour so if we draw the line depicting this additional time of study and project it on y-axis then we can you know infer that the grade of a student might you know might have might be increased by 0 0.5 so with an hour of increment in time to study will result in increase in some grades okay so if uh, the coefficient or slope a1 is less then it means that grade increment will be less for a unit increment of uh, you know hour uh, uh, with respect to uh, time to study 
if the slope is higher then that means that increment in time to study will result in more increment in grades now you might be wondering how simple linear regression uh, uh, finds a best fit line well the answer is using uh, ordinary least square method so let me explain that as well uh, so the blue plus sign shown here are actual observations okay and the trend line shown here is best fit line which also depicts uh, our simple linear regression model let's drop some uh, vertical uh, lines from the individual data points to the best fit line so the blue plus sign depicts a student who let's say studied uh, for five hours and got a grade of 3.9 okay so the best fit line uh, best fit black line actually depicts uh, where you know that student actually be lying according to our simple linear regression model and if you see according to our model it should be lying somewhere on the trend line and shown uh, here as uh, you know orange plus sign so the grade should actually be 3.5 now here blue plus sign is called as y subscript i which uh, depicts actual observation uh, the orange plus sign is called y hat subscript i and it depicts the predicted observations the white vertical dotted line is actually the difference between what a grade student got in actual and what he should have got according to the model prediction so in order to get the best fit line we actually take sum of square of difference between actual observation and predicted observations meaning you can take the distance uh, value of these individual white dotted lines and then you can square them and then finally add all of them now whichever trend line has minimum value will take uh, we will take that line as best fit line So this is the way a simple linear regression works. So folks, this is it for this video. To conclude, I gave an introduction as well as explained the intuition behind simple linear regression. So let me ask you a question from today's video. What does the parameter A1 signifies in the simple linear equation y equals to A0 plus A1 into x? Please post your comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your uh, technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button and in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys, I will be covering next topic in the upcoming videos. Keep on watching. Thank you.